Everybody's wishing they had fish and worm. Find them in the garden, turn over a rock. Slip them in your sandwich, put them in your sock. That's fish and worm, fish and worm. Welcome to episode number three from chapter six. And in this episode, we're going to talk about how do we manage our water resources. Now, the number one thing that it comes to when you're managing your water resources is you need to keep pollutants out of it. And pollutants, remember, there's a definition right here, harmful chemicals that are released into the biosphere. Now, if we can keep these out of water, especially our fresh water, because that's the ones that humans need to drink, and those are the ones that plants need to survive. If we keep the pollutants out of that, we're going to make survival for both uh, plants and animals and us much more uh, easier. All right. Now, pollutants come in two flavors. Number one is a point source pollution. And this one comes from a single source. So think about a factory, maybe a factory that's just spitting out pollutants into the water or into the air. Uh, think about an oil spill. Remember that deep water horizon oil spill that happened in the Gulf of Mexico? That's a point source. In other words, you can trace the pollutant back to a single individual source. Now, a non-point source, these are actually a little bit more common. These come from smaller um, sources that you can't pinpoint to just one single individual. And so I want you to think about every single car that's on the highway. Uh, I want you to think about every single gas station because there's always a little bit spilled. Well, I wouldn't say always. Uh, a number of their customers every day are going to spill a little bit of that gasoline. Okay, uh, Human beings will just throw toxic chemicals away into the trash. That can eventually get into the, uh, into the water supply. Now, some people will take their oil and harmful chemicals and just pour them into the storm sewer. And guess where theirs are going to go? They're going to go into the water supply. All right. So those are from non-point source. You can't trace it to a, a single individual. It's coming from collectively from humanity. All right. Now, this is probably the most important part in this episode. And I really want you to pay attention to this because you're definitely going to have some tests and quizzes over this. And this is a thing called biological magnification. Certain pollutants, when they get into the, to the water supply, they're going to be taken in by organisms as they move up the food chain. And the problem with these types of, with these certain types of pollutants is they're not broken down by the organism, so it stays in their tissues. And as you move up the trophic levels, that pollutant becomes more and more concentrated in the individual's tissues. Okay, So pollutants such as mercury, DDT, which is a pesticide that's no longer used in the United States, but it can be used in other parts of the world. Uh, PCP, which was a chemical that was often used in, um, um, you know what, I can't really re remember off the top of my head. All right, so PCBs was another chemical that's kind of illegal to use in the United States uh, for this reason. All right, now these can be taken in by the organism and they're not broken down. And therefore, it always stays in the organism's tissue. So as you move up the trophic level, the concentration increases. All right, so why don't you look over here at this picture. This is from real life. Um, back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, when DDT was used a ton to keep the, the insect populations down, uh, we saw a problem with our larger birds of prey. For, like here an example, you have a bald eagle. This almost wiped out the bald eagle population because as this chemical becomes more and more concentrated as you moved up the, uh, the trophic levels, the, uh, the eagles and the hawks, their eggshells were very fragile, so a lot of their babies didn't survive. And sometimes the concentration got so high inside the birds themselves that the adults were dead. So I don't know if you ever noticed this, dead eagles have a hard time producing young. And if the youngs are in eggs that are very, very fragile, they can get broken and that baby can die before it ever has a chance to hatch. So this biological magnification almost completely wiped out the bald eagle population. And that being our national bird, that would be a complete tragedy. Okay? All right, so a very simple uh, and easy episode. This biological magnification is really important, so make sure you pay attention to this. All right, so maybe you want to watch this part of the episode once or twice. We'll catch you on the flip side.